and uh, today I want to discuss uh, a new type of regression, which is called logistic regression. And uh, basically this is a variant of regression model that is uh, suitable for predicting uh, not, uh, uh, not numeric data like previous, uh, but some categorical data. And particularly uh, in this, uh, in logistic regression, uh, we assume that we have to predict uh, some binary variable. Uh, so, in uh, here our dependent variable uh, dependent variable uh, is something something binary uh, so it takes uh, two values. So this is categorical variable uh, with two possible values. And uh, let us consider some examples. Um, for example, assume that uh, we have um, some speakers and uh, we ask each speaker to use uh, one of two possible forms of some word. For example, we provoke uh, the um, generation of some text uh, when uh, this person should choose uh, which word which word to use. And mm, assume that we have uh, some uh, word that can be either normal or dialectical. And uh, we are interested in the following question, uh, which factors uh, allows us to select between these two, uh, between these two forms. Uh, so uh, our data can look like uh, something, something like, like the following. Uh, assume that I get only one sentence from uh, each informant and I have some information that is related to this informant and some information that is related to sentence. Uh, for example, we have uh, data that looks like we have informant ID and uh, we have their age and we have uh, some other information about uh, this informant. Uh, for example, village, and uh, assume that I have informants from different villages, and maybe uh, some mother tongue. So language that this informant used uh, as the L1 as the first language, and. Uh, Okay, let us uh, just use this informant related uh, informant related information, but also let us use uh, some uh, information about the sentence. Uh, uh, for example, I don't know uh, part of speech. And uh, then we have actually word. And so we have a table like here we have some identificator of informant, uh, here we have age, uh, here we have some code for village, um, here we have some mother tongue, for example Russian, and we have part of speech, uh, for example, I don't know which parts of speech exists. Okay, let it be subject. I think it is possible. And we have, uh, and uh, their normal uh, word is used. And some other informant uh, of different age, 
uh, of the same village and uh, are different. I, I think, but uh, of speech, it's like nouns, verbs, so. Okay. Then it is not, not part of speech, but how to say it? Um, when we do syntactic, uh, so they're I'm all like, mm, yes, yeah, syntactic role, maybe. Yeah. Syntactic role, okay. I meant syntactic role, yeah, sure. Not part of speech. Syntactic role, uh, and it will be subject. And we have some other person with some other mother tongue, for example. I don't know, block and syntactic role okay, in subject. And here uh, we use different form of this world. This is dialectical and so on. So we have a large table that looks like this one. And uh, now we are interested in uh, the question uh, how these variables affect uh, the choice of uh, this word. And um, let us begin with something simple. Let us assume that we are considering only, uh, only how our age um, uh, affects uh, this word choice. We can expect, uh, for example, that dialectical form are, um, that dialectical form uh, become more uh, become less popular uh, as age decreases. So for younger people, we can expect that uh, they use more normal forms and less dialectical forms. This is quite reasonable. And uh, in fact, uh, we see something like this in the data. Uh, and uh, let us assume that uh, I want to do some kind of regression model to uh, get quantitative uh, estimate of this process. And um, so uh, I want to construct a model. Uh, let us consider first step, bivariate model. And uh, my question that I'm trying to answer is uh, the following. Uh, how H is uh, related to uh, the choice between normal and dialectical. And um, so basically, um, do you have any ideas how to, how to answer this question? If I have this data, I have these two columns. Um, is it possible to understand? For example, is it true that people tend to use uh, normal words, uh, normal forms uh, when, if, if this person is younger and if this person is older, we can expect to see more dialectical form. How to test this kind of hypothesis? Any ideas? Hmm? So Anybody? we needed to write uh, a correlation between the uh, um, this numeric variable age and uh, the variable uh, word normal or uh, dialectical, yes? Uh, yes, something like this. Yes, we are interested in something like correlation, but uh, unfortunately we don't have actually a correlation. Uh, we have numeric variable and we have categorical variable and we don't have uh, any, any notion of correlation between uh, these two different kinds of variables. This is not ordered variable. If it, if it were ordered, uh, it is possible to consider, uh, for example, Spearman's correlation or Kendall's correlation, but uh, we don't have any order. We just have two possible values. 
and um, any other ideas? Uh, I guess uh, we could uh, um, for every age, and uh, like mm -hmm. if we have a sample for every age, uh, find like uh, in what percent of cases. Uh, for example, uh, in this age, our informants uh, use dialectal mm -hmm. forms mm -hmm. and uh, see uh, like if it uh, becomes bigger with the age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. If we have enough data, if we have uh, several observations for each age, uh, we can just uh, find the percentage of usage, for example, of dialectical words uh, per each age, and then draw some graph uh, like, like the following. Uh, we have age here and uh, we have, for example, proportion of dialectical words. And so for each age, we can, uh, we can draw this something like, something like this. Okay, it is probably too fast, but probably it can look something like this. Uh, probably we don't have so, so young participants. Uh, something like this. And then we can uh, try to test, is it true that we have something positive here, something with positive slope, something increasing. But uh, it will not work if uh, we don't have enough data. So if we have on them, uh, so for example, if you have on them like 100 informants, uh, then uh, it is possible that you don't have some ages at all. And sometimes we have even smaller number of informants. So uh, this averaging uh, can be uh, a, bit, a bit complicated. And also it is possible that we have not this kind of data, but uh, something like this. And uh, probably, uh, probably uh, this difference between these averages is just because we have too small number of uh, informants of each age. And just by a coincidence, for example, here, uh, like we have two informants uh, and, uh, okay, we have, for example, three informants and all of them used uh, normal form, but actually we expect to see something something like something like this here. So we have uh, so the actual values of average so the actual values of proportion uh, can be rather noisy. And um, so what are other ideas? How can we deal with this stuff? In fact, uh, we can do something like linear regression, but uh, to do linear regression, we have to, so uh, what if we want to do linear regression? And in this linear regression, we would write something like word equals to beta naught plus beta one times h. Something, something like this. But the problem is that I cannot write this formula as is because this word is not a numeric, but it is categorical. Are there any ideas how I can fix this model? Actually, so this it is, is, hmm? uh, uh, it is uh, the same trick uh, that we had with uh, zero and one. Yeah, we basically, uh, exactly. Basically, we can encode 
um, our uh, categorical variable world, we can encode it with zeros and ones. So for example, we can say that we have zero for normal and one for dialectical. So this is like dummy variable. And uh, we can put this dummy variable to the left of this model. Uh, but we have some problem with uh, this approach. Actually, this approach is doable uh, and sometimes you can try to use it. Um, but we have some problem with interpretation of this approach. Because uh, if we draw the graph, uh, we would have something like this. We have some zeros. Okay, I expect uh, that dialectical will, yeah, dialectical will increase with age. So I expect something like this. Uh, sorry, not this. So uh, here zero corresponds to normal and one corresponds to dialectical. And uh, then in my data, I have only ones and zeros, something like this. And um, this, is, this is the scatter plot that I get if I interpret my dialectical, uh, my word variable uh, as zeros and ones. Uh, and basically I can, uh, I can use uh, this linear regression and just fit some kind of straight line, something like this. Okay, let me make it a bit more straight. Something like this. And uh, this is best fit line. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, it is not clear how to interpret this line. Because uh, now if, after I fitted this line, if I uh, get some uh, theoretical informant of a particular age, uh, for example, of age 60, um, or better use some, oops, sorry. Uh, let me use something, some age here, 45. If I get some uh, informant of age 45 and I use my model to predict the value of this variable, I get something strange. I get uh, some value that is between zero and one. Uh, how would you interpret this prediction? For example, I have a prediction um, O.6. How would you interpret this value? Um, it would be probability to get uh, the electron form. Yeah, great. That's a great idea to interpret these values as probabilities. Uh, so it means uh, that we now assume that our data were generated by some, as we call it, probabilistic model. It means that we assume that uh, every time uh, when some informants and person uh, cho cho uh, choose which word to use, which form of the word to use, normal or dialectical, uh, they do something like uh, coin tossing. And uh, they give us uh, either a normal or dialectical form with some probabilities. This does not mean that we have a fair coin. We have a coin that it generates, uh, for example, dialectical word with dialectical form with some probability. And this probability depends on the age of our informant. So basically we think that every informant uh, has a virtual coin in uh, their pocket and every time they have to decide which word to use, they toss this coin 
and then just follow uh, what uh, what this coin uh, said them. Uh, this is not uh, very realistic. We understand that nobody uh, actually uses uh, this uh, kind of decision-making procedure. Uh, but this is very useful to think about uh, our reality in terms of this probabilistic model. And this is what actually uh, people in statistics uh, do every time. So we just think about models. And uh, now, uh, indeed, it is a, a very good idea to, uh, to assume that uh, the choice of form uh, is uh, decided by uh, something probabilistic uh, by coin tossing and probability to obtain uh, dialectical form uh, if, if a function uh, it is some function of h uh, this is clearly a reasonable idea, so it just says that people of different age uh, has different uh, probability to use dialectical form. That, that is quite reasonable. And then let us return to this picture. Uh, actually, our uh, idea to uh, interpret some values uh, on the vertical axis here as probabilities the values that are predicted by this model is very good. But we have some problem with, uh, with this model. Uh, do you see any problems with this kind of interpretation of this model? Is it possible to interpret uh, the prediction of uh, this model as probabilities uh, in all cases. Mm, I have a question. So mm -hmm. this model means that uh, a person uh, uh, which is 45 um, um, have a, like a equal probability, um, more or less equal probability to choose Mm -hmm. uh, normal or dialectal word. Yeah, yes. uh, slightly. Uh, yes, uh, I, I put here all the six, so it means it is slightly more uh, uh, more probable, so slightly more likely to get a dialectical form, uh, but it is uh, it is close. Yes, our current interpretation is this. Mm, uh, I'm not a specialist, maybe, but uh, I would say that the choice um, between two words uh, would be um, would depend very much on the environment and uh, the person who uh, grew up in the village where everyone said dialectal form would say this form at any age, and the person who grew up uh, grew up listening to the normal form. Uh, we do uh, the same, but maybe it's yes, not uh, about... Uh, yes, and we will take into account it uh, when we include this village variable uh, into our analysis. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it is possible that, uh, well, um, uh, it is possible that e even if we select only one village, uh, it is possible that we see uh, some tendency like shown here. Uh, so people who are, uh, who are uh, uh, elder, and they use dialectical form more often. And uh, those who are younger, who have probably more contacts with uh, other with, with foreigners, uh, with outer world, they use dialectical forms uh, less less often. This, this is actually what, uh, what data shows. Uh, I can cite the research uh, that, that shows that we have this effect. Uh, 
Uh, but anyway, even if you don't uh, believe in this effect, you can just consider this model as some theoretical possibility. Mm, okay, so the question now is... Uh... What's wrong? What's wrong with this picture and with this interpretation of this picture? Maybe it's too linear. I don't know. Yes, and what's pro? And what is the problem with this linear function? If I try to interpret uh, its uh, values as probabilities. Mm. Maybe it shows that every person uh, starts. Uh, so every person in the young age starts with the normal form and ends with the dialectal form. I don't know. Uh, well, it shows even, <laughs> in a sense, it shows even more. It is not problem if uh, it were showing uh, just what you said. It is uh, possible. It is possible that uh, the youngest people in our uh, in our study uh, that they use normal forms exclusively and it is possible that younger uh, that, that uh, older people use dialectical form exclusively it is possible but we have uh, here at this graph something more something that is impossible what is it What is clearly impossible from from any perspective? Like it uh, in a very young age, it has a probability less than zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one problem. But probably we can say that this is not a much a problem because we just don't have we just don't have informants of such age and probably we can just say that our model doesn't work there it is possible every model have some limits of applicability some domain where it can be applicable and some domain where it cannot be applicable so probably this is just outside of our domain of applicability but we have another problem In fact, we can say that, uh, fine, we have negative probabilities here, but we don't have any people here in our sample. But do you see other problem with, with this straight line? Uh, then we have problems on the other side, uh, like mm -hmm. when we have uh, very, very old people and uh, yeah. the probability will be more than one thing. Yeah, uh, probability more than one is clearly impossible. Uh, it is mathematically impossible to have probability more than one. And uh, so we we see that our straight line fit even even if it is good in terms of uh, good fitting of these values. Uh, the fact that it gives us uh, probabilities that can be negative theoretically or more than uh, one, uh, this makes uh, this, this straight line fit uh, not very good in terms of interpretation. We cannot say that we interpret uh, these values as probabilities because if we say that we interpret them as probabilities, we have to assume that we have probabilities uh, that are greater than one or smaller than zero, it is impossible. So uh, we have to change uh, the way how we draw this curve and uh, we have switch uh, from straight line to some other, some other curve that we will use 
uh, to fit onto uh, our model. And uh, this is what uh, actually logistic regression. Uh, uh, this is how logistic regression is different from uh, just simple linear regression. Uh, so, so let us discuss uh, uh, how can we fix this linear regression. So we have problem. Uh, I cannot interpret. values of our function uh, beta naught plus beta one of uh, times h. So if this is function of h, I uh, cannot interpret uh, these values as probabilities. Uh, due to uh, the fact uh, that they will become negative or arbitrary large. And uh, then to fix it, uh, we have to consider the following transformations. Uh, solution. Uh, transform probabilities uh, to so-called log odds. Uh, so, uh, let us uh, describe this transformation. So, we have probabilities and uh, probabilities uh, are, uh, they uh, can be from zero to one. Uh, of course, sometimes probability can be uh, exactly zero or exactly one, but now we will not consider these cases. Uh, so we believe that domain of probabilities are from zero to one. And uh, then let us consider another way to uh, think about probabilities. They are called odds. Odds are very similar to probabilities uh, and they are related with probabilities in the, uh, with the following formula. Odds of some event is a probability that this event happens divided by probability that this event uh, do not happen. Uh, for example, uh, actually we have this uh, in a uh, usual speech. Uh, for example, if I say, if I play with somebody a game and I say uh, my odds to win uh, are one to one. What is the corresponding probability? Uh, probability of winning. If odds to win are one to one. Вероятность выиграть один к одному. Шан, ну, точнее, не вероятность, а шансы выиграть один к одному. Какова вероятность выиграть? Слышали когда-нибудь такое выражение? So it means 100%. No? Mm -mm. Or, for example, um, Okay. Uh, one to one, yeah. Well, if if odds are one to one, then uh, probability of winning uh, is one half. 
uh, if I say that my odds to win uh, are one to one, so it means that probability that I win is the same as probability that I lose. So both probabilities are one half. And uh, in fact, uh, we see the same thing from this formula because if probability is one half, uh, if probability is one half, and then odds uh, is one half divided by one minus one half. So it is one half over one half, it is uh, one, one over one. Uh, so, uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, what is the range of odds? So, if probability changes from 0 to 1, what is the range of odds? Uh, first of all, uh, what are my odds if probability equals to 0 or very close to 0? What is the smallest value of odds? So uh, what is the value of odds is if uh, probability equals to zero, according to this formula? Zero. Zero, yeah. So if we see that probability is slightly larger than zero, then odds are also slightly larger than zero. And zero is uh, the left border of the corresponding range. And what about right border? If probability is very close to one, what can you say about odds? For example, if probability equals to O dot nine nine nine, what can I say about odds? Mm, so they are nine 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 because it would be mm -hmm. uh, because one minus uh, zero dot nine nine nine, it would be like zero mm -hmm. dot zero zero one, and mm -hmm. then yeah. And so if probability approaches one, uh, where odds tend? How does it change? If I put some more nines here, what changes? So if probability uh, is close to one, the odds are more than one. Could you say that? They more than one. Uh, that's that's true. But I want something something more. It is correct that uh, nine hundred ninety nine is more than one. But uh, probably you can say something more. Are there infinity. any hmm? infinity? Yeah. In fact, there is no any border, any uh, any upper bound that we can uh, that we can use uh, here. So there is lower bound, zero. Odds cannot be smaller than zero, but uh, there is no uh, upper bound. We cannot put here any numbers because we just can add here, uh, we can add more nines here and we can add more nines here. And so we can get arbitrary large value. So uh, we don't have any upper bound and we write it uh, like this. So upper bound is infinity. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, it probably uh, allows us to understand why I switched from probabilities to odds, because the range of this function is from negative infinity to plus infinity, all possible uh, values, all possible real values can be uh, values of this function, of this linear function. If I have just linear uh, linear function with non-zero slope, I can get either 
uh, arbitrary large values or arbitrary small values. And mm, uh, that's what I have. And now I have these odds. And uh, these odds are change from zero to plus infinity. And uh, the next step I want is to transform these odds uh, to some new value that will change from negative infinity to plus infinity. And to do it, uh, I will use logarithm function. Let me recall uh, the graph of logarithm function. It is like, like this. And uh, its domain uh, is from zero to plus infinity. And its range is from negative infinity to plus infinity. So uh, I, will, uh, I will use, uh, so initially I have probability, then I use odds, and uh, then I use a logarithm of odds. And now as odds change uh, from zero to plus infinity, logarithm of odds changes from negative infinity to plus infinity. So any real number can be logarithm of some odds. So here we have range from negative infinity to plus infinity. And now uh, our model, our logistic regression works like the following. Uh, we say that, uh, let us denote uh, probability to use dialectical form uh, by P. And then we write it uh, like the following. Our model is that logarithm of odds is a linear function of H. This is, this is our model. So to interpret this model, we have uh, understand how logarithm of odds are related to the corresponding probability. So let us uh, draw a kind of table. We have uh, P and we have uh, log, uh, log odds. So uh, we already know that if P is close to zero, Uh, by the way, it is a good question. If if probability is close to zero, uh, what can I say about logarithm of odds? So uh, we know that if uh, probability is close to zero, then it means that odds are also close to zero. And what about log odds? We can look at this picture and uh, answer this question. So this is odds. This is log. Should odds. be a negative infinity. Yeah, it is. Be, it will be very, very, very small. It is. It, it it will be close to negative infinity. It means that it will be um, large in absolute value, but negative. So very negative. large by absolute value and negative. Uh, we will be somewhere here. So if probability is somewhere here, then uh, actually if odds are somewhere here, then logarithm of odds is somewhere here. 
if uh, p is close to zero, uh, if p is close to one, then uh, we have uh, an opposite situation. Uh, then it means that log odds uh, are very large. Close to plus infinity. So here uh, we become larger, larger, large, and so on. Uh, now, um, okay, somewhere between we have to take value zero. Uh, what if logarithm of odds is zero? Uh, which probability corresponds to this case if logarithm of odds is zero? In fact, let me put number one here. So if logarithm of odds is zero, then the probability is going to be close to zero as well. No, if probability is close to zero, then it means that uh, that log odds is very negative. It is somewhere here. And now I'm asking uh, about log odds uh, uh, to be equal to zero. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, then it's not, going not to be probability, bad. not probability, but log odds. So which value of, pro of probability corresponds to the value of log odds that is equal to zero? One. If probability is one, then uh, log odds are very large, not zero. One half. One half, exactly. Uh, in fact, we know that if probability equals to one half, then it means uh, that uh, odds are equal to one, one to one, which is the same thing as one. And if odds are equal to one, it means that we are here it, at this exact point. And at this point, actually logarithm of one equals to zero. Uh, so uh, probability of one half uh, is zero. In fact, uh, it is uh, rather reasonable because what what does it say? Uh, it says that if log odds are positive, then probability is larger than uh, one half. So if log odds are positive, then uh, we more likely to get dialectical form. And if log odds are negative, then it is more likely to get normal form. So this is reasonable and symmetric uh, symmetric situation. So we have this one half and zero. And let me ask uh, another question. What if uh, probability increases? What can you say about log odds? If probability becomes larger. Then log odds uh, also become larger. Exactly. Increases as well. Uh, indeed, if uh, if p becomes larger, and then um, this uh, fraction also become larger, because numerator become larger and denominator become smaller. And a logarithm is monotonic function. It is uh, monotonically increasing. Uh, if we look at this graph, we see that uh, if odds uh, become larger, then uh, the value of log odds also become larger. And uh, this means that it is also increasing. And uh, in fact, uh, it is uh, all these all this properties are rather good. Uh, they say uh, that we can think about this log odds like a fixed version of probability. It is a kind of linearized version of probability. Uh, the main difference is that log odds changes from negative infinity to plus infinity, but other natural properties like uh, this monotonicity or 
uh, some symmetry with respect to zero. Um, they are very, very natural and uh, this allows us to uh, explain what happens in uh, logistic regression. For example, let us look at this model and let us assume that we know that this age uh, variable is more than zero. Then uh, what does it mean? It means that if I, oh, sorry, uh, this variable, uh, this beta one variable is uh, larger than zero if it is positive. Uh, so let me give you some example. Uh, if uh, beta one is positive, uh, it means uh, that uh, larger age uh, correspond to corresponds to larger log odds. Uh, for using dialectical form. And uh, it means that it corresponds to larger probability uh, of dialectical form. So basically we can interpret the sign of this coefficient in a reasonable way. I mean that if it is positive, it means that if we increase this value, then in our model, uh, this value will be increased and also probability will be increased. So we have some positive dependence. And if it is negative, then we have our opposite negative dependence. Uh, in fact, I can rewrite uh, this formula uh, with some algebra. I can rewrite uh, this formula in the following way. Uh, in fact, let me consider function which is called sigmoid and uh, it is written like this. one over one plus e to the power negative z. And uh, this sigmoid looks like the following graph. Uh, so it, uh, it, its range is from zero to one and it is increasing. And uh, here we have value one half. And uh, then uh, I will not, uh, I will not give you uh, the full uh, calculation, uh, but actually this formula that I used uh, previously uh, is equivalent to the following formula. Probability equals to sigmoid of uh, beta, beta naught plus beta one times h. Uh, so basically it means uh, that the function that we are interested in is uh, a shifted and scaled version of this sigmoid. Uh, in fact, uh, we can uh, return to our example with some data. Uh, 
in fact, uh, what we are interested in uh, is fitting some scaled uh, or shifted version of this sigmoid uh, to our data. And uh, this shifted version uh, can look like something like this. For example, something like this. Or uh, maybe uh, a bit more sharp. For example, it is possible to see sigmoid like this. Uh, basically, we have two parameters here. This parameter beta naught and this parameter beta one. And uh, beta uh, beta one uh, is a steepness of this curve. So uh, small beta one uh, close to zero means uh, that we have something like this and uh, large beta one uh, means that you have something sharp like like a sharp step something like this And uh, beta naught shifts uh, this curve uh, to the left or to the right. In fact, I can show you this function if I have some kind of graphic calculator here. I probably have. I probably can use some GeoGebra. Uh, so I need one over one plus e to the power negative x. So uh, this uh, this is basically my uh, sigmoid the, uh, that I showed you initially. And you see that uh, we have uh, at point zero, we have value uh, one half. And uh, then uh, I can put not, uh, not X, but something more complex. Uh, I can put here some linear function uh, so, I can put here with um, with zero plus beta one times x and now I can change beta one and beta zero and let us look what happens with this curve uh, this is uh, what happens uh, when I change beta one you see that it becomes uh, more or less uh, uh, more or less steep and if it is negative, then uh, it becomes decreasing function. And if it is positive, it is increasing. In fact, I can even get here larger values. And you see that uh, I can make it almost a sharp step. And uh, this uh, beta one uh, just shifts this to the left or to the right.
And uh, now, actually, the difference between logistic regression and linear regression is uh, that uh, instead of uh, fitting uh, the straight line, as we did previously, uh, we fit uh, this family of logistic curves, uh, of curves like this one, uh, to our data. In fact, we also, um, again, we try to, uh, we try to uh, fit uh, this curve to our data as uh, as best as possible, but of course uh, we have some errors. So we have these differences. And uh, in this uh, logistic regression, uh, we treat this difference uh, not Mm, not in the same way as with uh, usual regression, uh, but we increase uh, the, uh, we penalize uh, cases when our regression predicts uh, that probability, for example, is uh, very large, like here, but uh, we have example that contradicts to, to it. So, uh, if, uh, if, for example, we have a case like here, uh, here the model uh, predicted probability that is small, but not extremely small. And we get, uh, we get example with value that is equal to zero, uh, that is equal to one. Then we say, okay, it is not very big problem because here the probability to get uh, value one was rather was rather non-zero. So we get uh, this value one, it, it, it can happen. It is just, everything is, uh, uh, everything is possible. But if we have uh, the same case here, for example, for this line um, here, uh, or better say here, we see that uh, we have value zero, but our model predicted uh, the probability to get one to be uh, close to one. And it means that uh, for this point, we impose a very large fine, very large penalty to our model. And so our model tries to, uh, to in that cases when it is unsure, then it tries to, to give us probability that are somewhere between, somewhere close to one half. But basically all these uh, are uh, some, internals of this model, what you have to understand is uh, that uh, we uh, predict uh, that uh, our prediction is this curve, that the result of our prediction uh, is probability, and uh, that we can interpret uh, the values of these coefficients, like this coefficient with the age, uh, we can interpret in the following way. If it is positive, then uh, we have uh, positive relation between probability and this variable. If it is negative, we have negative relation. So probability decreases as uh, this variable increases. Uh, unfortunately, it is not possible in this case to explain uh, how much probability will change if H is increased by one. Because as you see, this, uh, this curve is nonlinear. And if I increase a uh, horizontal uh, variable by one here, it will lead to a large increase in probability. But if I do the same thing here, uh, it will also uh, lead to increase, but much smaller. So uh, this is uh, the disadvantage of nonlinear model that we cannot interpret uh, this coefficient uh, as something like the value that uh, allows me to understand uh, how much the dependent variable uh, will be increased as I increase uh, the value of independent variable by one. But anyway, we can interpret the sign of this, uh, of, of this coefficient, uh, which is also uh, sometime uh, it provides us uh, very good information about the relation between variables. Um, so are there any questions so far? Maybe.
maybe uh, I have a question about mm -hmm. what is a log function uh, because uh, no, what I is know logarithm? what is a, no I know what is a logarithm mm -hmm. uh, I know if you uh, have uh, like three and nine so um, so I, I believe that uh, so uh, uh, there is uh, three is called the, uh, the base uh, nine is uh, the number and then a uh, logarithm mm -hmm. would be uh, two yes so, yes exactly. mm -hmm. yeah yeah but uh, when we are talking about functions what logarithm means so because i don't see uh, uh, mm -hmm. i do not see uh, no base here in this log log p divided by one minus mm -hmm. p ways uh, the base ways mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, if I write a log without any base, uh, then it means that it is, uh, it is natural logarithm. Uh, in Russian tradition, uh, it is usually uh, written as ln, logarithm natural. Uh, in American tradition, it is usually written just uh, as log without any, uh, without any uh, specific base. And uh, this is just, uh, this is very close to logarithm with base three because uh, it is natural logarithm. So base equals to E uh, and E is some number like 2.7. And uh, then uh, we just say that uh, this function is the function with fixed base. And so it depends only on this variable only on only of it's this argument and so this is this is the function in fact uh you you, you know uh, exponential function that is written like which graph is like this and uh, logarithm function is exactly opposite of this uh, of this so this is exponential function and uh, this is logarithm function. Uh, oops, not, not very good. I have to draw it symmetric with respect to y equals to x. So something like this. And uh, this is logarithm function. And exponential function tends to horizontal zero here. So logarithm function will tend to vertical zero here. So it tends to negative infinity as uh, its argument approaches zero and it tends to positive infinity very slowly as its argument uh, increases and tends to infinity. So this is how logarithm graph of the logarithm looks like. And this is the logarithm that we use in this logistic function. More questions? So this function is about as to which uh, to which number should I multiply this in number mm -hmm. to get what I want to get? Yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, you don't have to think about this e. Uh, if you are, if you understand what is logarithm of number three, uh, with, if you understand what is logarithm with base three, you just substitute e to three every time, and you will get a rather good intuition about these logarithms. Yeah. So actually, we can see uh, that logarithm growth very slowly because, uh, for example, if I have if I, if I have logarithm with base three of number three, it is one because three to the power one is three. Logarithm with base three of number 10, uh, of number nine is two because uh, three to the power two equals to nine and so on. And we can see that it grows uh, very, very slowly because to get a uh, value three, we have to increase argument up to 27 yeah this is like and so on so 
it grows rather slowly. Uh, we have uh, we have here number three, here number nine, and here number twenty-seven, and we have this increase by one every time. So just something like this. But it tends to infinity. So we can make it arbitrarily large by uh, taking arbitrary large number here. And also if we are interested in, in um, negative values of logarithm, we can say that, for example, logarithm with base three of number one third equals to negative one, because three to the power negative one is one third. So I have to put here is minus one. And then if I would decrease this value even more, I would have more negative values here. So this is more or less how logarithms work. More questions about logistic regression? Maybe why it is it is called logistic. So oh, where is the well, logistics? Yeah, it is it is a long story that uh, actually this function uh, this function um, okay there is so-called logistic model. I don't know why it is logistic model, and it is related to some differential equations. And in these differential equations, uh, there are solutions uh, that follows this rule. And um, basically, I don't know where the origin, why it is logistic, uh, this word. But anyway, everybody use it. Uh, because so, maybe uh, it would be more evident to call it a logarithmic uh, regression because well, we use uh, this, logarithms. Um, yeah, but this is, uh, this is not a logarithm of probability. This is logarithm of odds. And so this is not a logarithmic regression. In fact, uh, the general uh, notion uh, that is used here is that it is a generalized linear regression. Uh, this is generalized linear model. Uh, actually, if we say that this is generalized linear model, it means that uh, on the left-hand side, we have not the value that we are actually interested in, actually this probability, but we have uh, some function of this of this value. Uh, and on the on the right hand side we have linear function. So it is linear model but not quite linear model. Something something generalized. And in fact in R you will use function GLM to do actual fitting instead of just LM that you used uh, in uh, when you fit just two variables or more than two variables, but with usual linear regression. And uh, actually uh, I, uh, I initially wrote uh, this uh, complex table but we are considered so far only these two variables, only age and word. But of course, it is possible to uh, construct more complex, uh, more complex models. Uh, for example, we can for example, we can construct a model uh, that says that logarithm p uh, over one minus p equals to B to naught plus B to one times H plus uh, B to two uh, time of variable that village uh, equals to something. I don't remember actually this villages. So first village plus 
beta 3 times dummy variable that village equals to some second village and so on. So you can construct uh, more complex models just like uh, we constructed more complex models in case of linear regressions. And again, uh, every coefficient will show how uh, the, the corresponding log odds will change. Uh, again, it is uh, quite difficult to interpret the value of this coefficient itself, but at least we can easily interpret its sign. So this is done uh, just like we did it in the usual, the usual regressions. Okay. So uh, if there are no more questions, I think we can make a 10 minutes break and uh, continue with exercises.
So hi everyone, how are you? Uh, yeah, okay, I think. Uh, okay, that sounds okay. Uh, so let's start. Uh, we'll do on the seminar, uh, we'll finish uh, uh, linear regression with diamond variables. Uh, we will now try some more compli complicated uh, situations where our dummy variable uh, has more than two groups. Uh, and then if we, if we have time, we'll uh, uh, start uh, playing with uh, logistic regression in R. Uh, so let's start. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so let's continue to work with our drug core data. Uh, but in this case, we'll work uh, not with, uh, uh, so if you, um, if you didn't attend the previous seminar, uh, please install the package, the last version of the package, uh, because I fixed some bug uh, one week ago. Uh, and uh, yeah, import packages, import tidy verse as usual, and Ardra Core. And we'll work with uh, not Russian drama corpus now, but with uh, a German drama corpus. Uh, in it, contain, it can take some time uh, while downloading uh, the, uh, the data. Uh, and uh, if you remember, we used the variable normalized gender. And in this case, uh, we have actually three conditions, plus and A, uh, comedy, tragedy, and tragic comedy. So we have three groups. And uh, when we do uh, regression with uh, uh, three groups uh, as a predictors, uh, as a predictor, uh, we have some serious problem. Can you describe what is the problem? Why we can't just do the linear regression? What was the problem? Maybe here are too many dots and it is hard to, I don't know, draw a line. So any like linear line would uh, oh no this plot mm, uh, this plot it, was not uh, relevant to, uh, uh, to 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 the data set sorry just was plot that i prepared uh before the seminar sorry so don't look at the plot so uh, do you remember how we uh how uh we handled uh categorical variable as a predictor in linear regression uh, during the previous seminar. So uh, we had uh, two groups and uh, how we uh, processed this cat uh, categorical variable uh, for, uh, to, for, for being a predictor in linear regression. What we did, uh, what we did to that, because usually when we talk about linear regression, we talk about like numerical variables, right? So what was the problem, and how we did solve it? You mean this uh, mutated uh, mutate function with uh, the tragedy, uh, like yeah. we? Uh, okay. Yeah, so, so, so we actually created a dummy variable uh, that uh, just was converted like uh, tragedy is one, comedy is zero. And now we have numerical variable that we can use as a predictor in linear regression. Uh, and actually what we learned uh, when we tried to do, the, uh, to do uh, linear regression just on categorical 
uh, variable as a predictor is that we don't uh, need uh, to do it by our hands. So we don't need to do uh, mutate by ourselves. And actually uh, LM function uh, just success successfully uh, convert uh, uh, a categorical predictor with two groups uh, into this dummy variable. So one value that goes first uh, becomes zero, another one becomes one. And we interpreted uh, then uh, results of coefficients of linear regression uh, and um, uh, so the pictures, so the figures, created the figures, uh, uh, explore, uh, interpreted the figures and so on. But what is the uh, difficulty uh, that we challenge when we do the same on, uh, on the variable with three groups? I mean, it doesn't work anymore on three groups because we cannot invent like such three variables that two of them will delete themselves in the case when we need it and just one will be rest like with zero and one. So every variable mm -hmm. with zero is deleted and, uh, and only the variable with one is what we have finally, but with uh, three mm -hmm. variables, it, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, but why can't we, for example, just uh, to do very similar, but uh, like we convert comedy to one, tragedy to, uh, oh, sorry, comedy to zero, tragedy to one, and tragic comedy to two. What is the problem with this solution? I mean, we couldn't clearly like convert it to zero, one, two, and apply it as a predictor for linear regression. But would it be okay? Or something wrong with it? Mm, but I think that tragedy and tragic comedy would not be any different in this case because uh, they would mm, uh, they would be two positive variables. And, and that's it, maybe. Mm. I don't mm. know. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, wouldn't work. What do you mean that it wouldn't work? You mean that actually tragic comedy is just uh, like a subtype of uh, tragedy or comedy or what? Mm, yeah, maybe in, in this case. Uh, mm. Like there would be no difference between tragedy and tragic comedy. Mm. Mm, maybe, maybe. Actually, we don't know. We we need we need to test it actually. Uh, because yeah, because we, we can hypothesize that yeah, maybe actually tragic comedy is not so different to tragedy, but. Uh, Another researcher can say that no, tragic comedy is actually not, uh, is neither comedy nor tragedy. And it's very specific genre that is, um, that has very specific uh, features and so on. So maybe yes, maybe no, but we have data and we can test it. Um, uh, but uh, but what uh, what will be the problem if we just code uh, comedy as zero, tragedy as one, and tragic comedy as two? It will be pretty similar to what we did with uh, just two groups. One becomes zero, another one becomes one. Uh, why can't we do the similar here and code something as zero, another group as one, and the third group as two, or just one, two, three, or whatever numbers? What is the problem with this approach? So, and we think that maybe, of course, we are not 100% sure, 
if you'll be if you are 100 sure maybe you will not start this, the research uh we think that may that maybe these groups are completely different like uh, uh one group is uh I mean, they are different genders. They cannot be expressed as a tragedy is something between comedy and tragedy. Do we have any ideas? Because it's a very important point because uh, it's very important uh, to understand because uh, otherwise, uh, it will be not clear why uh, functional M does uh, uh, things that that it does. So, so just try to think why can, uh, why can't we just code it as one, two, three, for example, and use this one, two, three as a predictor for uh, linear regression. But it would mean that, like, uh, tragic comedy is uh, third uh, times more than comedy in, in something, but it is not the equal. Yes, exactly. So the problem is that um, uh, we can code something as uh, some uh, categorical variable as one, two, three, but it will be nominal uh, variable. Uh, nominally, uh, variable on a nominal scale. It means that uh, this uh, values one to three, they just represent uh, ID, an ID of a group. Uh, and it's like, for example, number on a key short uh, of uh, football players. Uh, like this one has six, another one has uh, nine, and the third one has 10, but we cannot say uh, that uh, uh, the guy with a 10 on a t-shirt is somewhat more than a guy uh, with a 90 shirt and uh, uh, this, uh, this guy with a 90 shirt is somewhat more than uh, the guy with a, a 60 shirt. And uh, we, even we can turn, uh, compare them one to another uh, we cannot conclude uh, from the. Uh, we can say that uh, if a guy with a uh, t-shirt number ten uh, is larger than a guy uh, with a t-shirt number nine, and a guy with a, a t-shirt number nine is larger than uh, uh, the guy with a t-shirt number six, we cannot conclude from that that. Uh, the guy with a uh, t-shirt number 10 is larger than uh, t-shirt uh, number six. So it's just ideas. Uh, we cannot say that something is bigger than something. We cannot say that tragic comedy is two times uh, tragedy than comedy. Uh, we couldn't even say like, uh, like tragic comedy is something between comedy and tragedy. Okay, maybe, uh, but it will be very like, um, very like, you know, um, how to say, very liberal uh, assumption uh, that you need to take from some theory because uh, uh, they're just groups and you cannot, uh, and even if you give some, uh, numbers to, his, uh, to these groups. Uh, we, we cannot use these numbers as a, um, in a linear regression because it will mean that we somewhat uh, think about these numbers as some uh, at least rank scale that three is more than two and two is more than one, uh, therefore three is more than one. Uh, uh, that was not a that was not a problem when we uh, had only two groups because yeah just we can say one is zero another one is one uh, and yeah something is bigger than something means that just they're different. Uh, 
uh, but with uh, more than two groups, we cannot just convert it to the numer numerical scale. But what we can do, we can convert it to number of binary scales. Uh, so what we can do here uh, is to uh, create something, uh, some extra variables. Let me uh, repeat it one more time. Like A, B, and C. Uh, let's say we have uh, just A, B, and C. Because tragic comedy, oh, Oh no, we can have like uh, uh, T, C and T, C, I think. So this one will be T, this one will be T, uh, this one will be C, and this one will be T, C, and this one will be T, C. So tragedy comedy, tragedy comedy, tragedy comedy. And what we can do, we can create a number of extra variables uh, that will be like, is, a, is this variable uh, T, is this variable C, and is this variable TC. I even think that it will be better to start with a tragedy. So let's do it like that. So uh, let's... Mm, why we have TC two times? Sorry? Why we have uh, TC two times? Uh, uh, it just, uh, we have number of cases, uh, just like uh, four uh, plays here. And like one of them is T, another one is C. And I mean, we have more than that actually. So we have something like, uh, you know, um, like, this we will have T, I'm sorry. Uh, this, uh, then we'll have like T and then uh, C and so on and so on. Uh, we have much more variables, but we'll like explore it on this simple example. Um, right, that's T. Is it uh, E? Is it TC? Yeah, I think. Yeah. And now we can uh, uh, create this uh, variables where uh, uh, for EC variable. Uh, we'll put uh, one if uh, this row is C and zero otherwise. So we'll have zero, one, zero, zero, and so on and so on. Uh, what we'll have for uh, dummy variable is T. One, then one. Zero. Zero. And then zero, zero. Zero, zero. Right. Uh, okay. And the last one. We have uh, a variable, a dummy variable is TC. And what we'll have there? Uh, zero, zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. Okay. And now we can use these variables as a predictors uh, for linear regression. But uh, here is uh, one more trick that actually, uh, when we created these variables, um, actually just two of them is enough uh, to uh, uniquely identify uh, the case. For example, if we know uh, that uh, we have one for is key, it means that 
It is a tragedy, right? And it cannot be anything different. If we have uh, uh, one for ESKC, it means that it's a tragic comedy, right? It cannot be anything different. But if we know that something is neither tragedy nor tragic comedy, we can conclude that it is a comedy because we have no other options. So actually, we don't have, all, uh, we don't need all these free variables, and it means that we can just delete one of them. Let's create and let's uh, delete. Let's say this one. No, <laughs> uh, like this. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can delete tra tragedy, uh, tragedy comedy variable because if something is comedy and is tragedy, then it is tragic comedy. It makes uh, maybe yeah, it more makes sense. sense uh, it, in theory, it makes sense, but uh, uh, it means that we have some uh, connections between this group, but we don't know. Uh, now we want to. Uh, think about these three groups as completely different, that we cannot say that something like in the middle of something, because if we can say that tragic comedy is something between uh, tragedy and comedy, we really don't need these dummy variables. We can use just one, two, three. So we can just uh, convert it to rank scale uh, and use it as a predictor. Uh, it can be questionable, but you can do it if you have strong theory behind why tragic comedy is just something is uh, just something between them. But if you don't, you can just consider it as the three different variables. Uh, so in this case, uh, do not think about like uh, the tragic comedy is something between them. Uh, in this case, it actually doesn't matter what we delete uh, because. Um, uh, well, mathematically, we will get uh, the same results. Uh, so let's uh, uh, so let's do a linear LM function first, and then we'll try to reproduce this example uh, using the uh, uh, using dummy coding by our hands. So let's uh, first. Open A uh, from the. Can you share your? Can you share oh, your? Yes, as, yes, as yes, yes. I, yeah, it's a bit complicated. Okay, uh, yeah. So first, we need to uh, delete uh, an ace. So all these cases, uh, two hundred fifty-nine cases with an ace for non-life gender variable. Okay. Then we will select just variables that uh, we are interested in. So previously we used um, we used uh, word context and we used size. Uh, okay, let's start with the size. Let's start with the size. So we are interested in normalized gender and size. That will be enough. So in most cases, you have tragedy or comedy. Sometimes you have tragic comedy. Um, and let's just use it in a LM function for linear regression. LM. Uh, what should I write here? Try to recover uh, the logic that we used in LM function. So what are the main parameters in LM functions, in LM function? Mm, so should you write size tilde? Mm -hmm. no? Right, so size uh, goes to the left because it's the outcome. So we predict something on the left with something on the right. Uh, it's just something that you, you should remember. But uh, uh, think about this uh, as a, uh actually equation i mean uh because usually you can see like y equal to a x plus b y equal to uh x multiplied by beta 
plus beta zero, for example. Uh, usually y is a, something that we are interested in to predict, to calculate, to estimate. Uh, it's something on the, uh, on the left side. Uh, size, normalized gender. And also we need to specify that we use the data. Uh, okay. And now you, you uh, have coefficients, but what is interesting is that you have three coefficients, not two. So intercept that you already know, and then the, something magical happens. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually predicted that uh, comedy will uh, come first. Uh, that's why uh, the example uh, that we draw actually valid. So uh, what it actually did inside this function LM uh, actually did this uh, dummy variables uh, from the uh, normalized gender. So it created a normalized gender tragedy and normalized gender tragic comedy. So there is zero or one, zero or one. And we don't have a uh, normalized uh, general comedy here. Uh, think about normalized gen uh, general, uh, general comedy as something like a baseline. So in this case, comedy is something like a baseline uh, and it has like uh, uh, the prediction for uh, a prediction for um, Comedy will be when uh, both tragedy and tragic comedy is zero. So it will be the value of intercept. So you can actually just uh, estimate uh, uh, average uh, size of uh, tragedies tragic comedies and comedies just from these coefficients or oh, these coefficients. So what will be your best estimation uh, for the size of uh, German uh, size means number of characters, number of characters for uh, German uh, tragedies. So for German uh, comedies, it's uh, 16, it's 16. What will be your best uh, estimation for uh, German tragedies? Mm, so it would be 18. Mm, actually, no, because remember that uh, the uh, um, the picture, the figure that we draw uh, a previous time. So, uh, uh, or you can just remember the formula. So formula will be in this case, we can write it as a uh, intercept plus uh, uh, normalized Normalized uh, gender uh, tragedy uh, coefficient multiplied by is it a tragedy? But uh, normalized. Gender tragic comedy, comedy multiplied by E tragic comedy. And then you can just, uh, you can just insert values in this equation. So for example, for comedy, how it will look like? It will be, uh, equal, uh, let's say, comedy estimate 
will be uh, intercept. Let's just replace these values, right? For simplicity. Uh, intercept plus uh, this coefficient, this coefficient, uh, multiplied by E strategy. Is comedy a tragedy? No, comedy is not a tragedy. Plus, normalized gender tragic comedy coefficient. Oh, let's just get Or we can just delete clear from both sides. Uh, and is a, a comedy, uh, is it tragic comedy? No, at least from the way we coded these variables. No, it is not a tragic comedy. So we calculated the result. Actually, we can simplify it because this one is just no uh, zero because we multiply by zero and this part is just zero. It means that for a uh, comedy, estimation will be just the value of intercept, right? I hope that it is clear because uh, it's helpful for uh, some time just uh, go through uh, 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 numbers just calculate by yourself, uh, by ourselves, uh, and uh, enjoy that formulas converge and we get some meaningful results. Um, okay, and let's uh, uh, calculate uh, the same for tragedies. So, what will be the formula? So, what we will insert? Yep. Followed by 18 times one. Mm -hmm. Yep. 5.3 times zero. Plus what, sorry? Five times zero, the value five. Uh, mm -hmm. Five times zero. Yeah, but it's for tragic comedy and, ah, yeah, this one also, yes. Yeah. Right. One. So, yeah, so the only difference uh, from tragedy is that uh, uh, for tragedies, the variable is tragedy is zero or one. So uh, uh, for tragedies, it's one. Uh, so uh, instead of zero, we have one here. But it changes, uh, <laughs> uh, change every, uh, changes everything, and now we have. Uh, estimate for tragedies, uh, 35, let's say, uh, if you round the numbers. Uh, so actually just uh, this value plus this value. And the same, let's do for tragic comedies. Tragic comedy. intercept is the same. Uh, this coefficient is the same for all values. And here we multiply by zero or one? Zero. Right, because uh, tragic comedy is not a tragedy. And then we multiply by, uh, multiplied by Zero or one? One. One, right. And now we have an estimate for tragic comedies. 21, right. Uh, okay. Uh, we can actually just uh, do it by ourselves to, to be sure that uh, it works this way. Uh, I really like to do that because, uh, well, I'm, I, I do not believe guys who create uh, statistical software. Sometimes I think that maybe, maybe they did some mistakes or I don't know what, what happens inside. Uh, but if I can uh, uh, reproduce the results and get the same numbers uh, just by hands, it means that I understand what's going on inside this. 
uh, formula. So uh, you can this way understand that there is no like magic inside. Uh, so you actually can go through formulas and reproduce uh, everything that uh, happens in uh, linear models because they are not that difficult. Of course, it's not like just uh, easy, but uh, all values you can derive analytically without any uh, kind, like a kind of uh, maximum likelihood estimations and so on. So we can just create a, a dummy variable by our hands. It will be uh, normalized uh, general tragedy equal to uh, uh, whether this one equal to uh, tragedy. And I will convert the two as numeric. So uh, if it's false, it will get uh, zero. If it's true, it will get one. The same I will do for tragic comedy. The comedy, or I will do it like this comedy, it's shorter, and easier to understand. The same, but as numeric, uh, Normalize gender equal to tragic comedy. comedy. Right, so we created this dummy variables by our hands. Look what we have there. So it's zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. And like, we, we don't have any uh, cases where we have, for example, two ones but we have cases where we have two zeros and these cases are comedies. Uh, and we can then use these new variables uh, in a lm function uh, with the same model, but in this case, uh, size goes to the left and to the right goes uh, is tragedy Uh, plus is project comedy. comedy. Data. And yeah, you can you can see that actually uh, we have the same coefficient, the same coefficient, the same p values, and so on. So. Here we have exactly the same results as here. I mean, absolutely same, the same results. Could you send the code in the chat? Uh, okay, of course. Um, from the 20. Mm -hmm. More time. Okay. So please uh, try to do the same. Try to do a uh, linear regression uh, with, uh, uh, but yeah, oh, the last uh, thing that we need to, to cover is to interpret uh, the results that we have. Because now we have uh, two coefficients. So we have uh, different uh, p-values for, for different coefficients. And we have like a uh, general uh, p-value for the model. Uh, in this case, if you remember when we had only one predictor, uh, one numerical predictor or uh, one a categorical predictor with just two groups, uh, p-value here uh, was the same as a p-value for the predictor. And we in generally ignored intercept, but uh, could you remember why? Why we ignored p-value for intercept? Why it's not so interesting for us? Is it because it's being used as a baseline? 
Um, yeah, somewhat, yeah, because uh, actually no hypothesis for uh, intercept is uh, zero. And actually it means that, yeah, baseline, so, uh, 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 so, so the baseline number of characters and for the baseline we have comedies. Uh, the number of characters statistically larger than zero. But I mean, yes, it's, it should because otherwise it is not a drama play. If you have no characters in a drama play, it, it, it's hard to call it drama play, right? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's obvious, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, um, you don't need to test it. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's very obvious and that's why we are not interested in that. It doesn't say anything about uh, difference between groups. It just says, yes, baseline is different from zero. Okay. Um, so what we are more interested in is this is uh, uh, p-values for the coefficients and p-value for the general, uh, for the whole model. Uh, so you can see that uh, this uh, is uh, significant and this is not. Uh, and partly uh, you can find uh, a reason actually why, some possible explanation why, for example, tragic comedy uh, does not uh, differ significantly here from uh, comedy while tragedy uh, is. So, I mean, there are many possible, uh, there, there are some number of possible explanations. Uh, and first, of course, that, well, maybe they really do not differ. That uh, um, actually, uh, that uh, this difference in sizes, it's really just by error, it just uh, uh, not exist, non-existent. Uh, but uh, do you remember how many uh, cases in each group we have? I will remind you, we have actually many cases of tragedy and just like more than 100 cases for tragedies and just seven tragic comedies. And it makes um, uh, the, like, the uh, larger your sample, uh, the better your estimation, the, the lower uh, uh, the error of your uh, measurement. And you can see that uh, for normalized general tragic comedy, standard error is much bigger than for uh, tragedy, for example, or intercept. Uh, so maybe it's just because we don't have enough statistical power to detect the difference because we have very low number of uh, tragic comedies. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and we can see that in general we have uh, for the model, uh, uh, we have uh, people less than 005. So it's something like, uh, uh, like you compare it, to uh, 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 how to interpret this uh, p-value, like the final p-value for the model. It's like uh, whether uh, it's, uh, probable to get this and more extreme results in case that no model is true. And no model here will be that there is only a, a influence of intercept, uh, but no difference between 
groups. So uh, these groups do not uh, influence the outcome uh, anyhow. Uh, and before you try by yourself, I want to show you uh, one another thing. That uh, do you remember? Um, do you remember analysis of variance ANOVA? I mean, you should because we we, 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 we started it. But it's okay that you learn many uh, uh, tests like uh, t-test, uh, he-square test, correlation coefficients, uh, linear regression, analysis of variance, and now also logistic regression. Uh, you have many of them, uh, you know, many of them, but uh, uh, yes, it's important to understand what different tests do, uh, but what is much more important is to, uh, is to understand that actually uh, most of them are very interconnected to each other. And uh, in general, in general, right, 90% uh, of uh, statistical tests that you uh, you know and that you will learn later, uh, like even on very advanced courses uh, for statistics, uh, actually 90% uh, of uh, tests, okay, I didn't calculate statistics, but something like that, you know, uh, can be considered as uh, uh, examples of uh, general linear models or some uh, generalization of uh, general linear model. So general linear model is somewhere in the center of uh, statistical testing somehow. Uh, and actually, if you remember, we used, uh, so uh, actually you now know that uh, t-test can be considered as an example of linear regression. Uh, correlation coefficient, Pearson correlation coefficient in particular, can be considered as an example of simple linear regression. Uh, and simple linear regression is just a case of uh, multiple linear regression and multiple linear regression actually almost the general linear model. Uh, so for general linear model, you have, you can have uh, uh, more than one outcome and they can be correlated and that's all actually. So um, that is only one step from multiple linear regression to general linear model. Uh, so, uh, and this function LM in uh, R is a, actually function for fitting these general linear models. Uh, you can even find it, it helps, it help to use fit uh, linear models. And by linear models means general linear models. Um, and, uh, if you remember, we explored, we used uh, analysis of variance to compare groups. And you may think, okay, but we used, uh, we used uh, analysis of variance to compare groups, but here we explore the effect of groups to some outcome. Isn't it the same thing basically? As the answer is yes, exactly. Analysis of variance is just an example of linear model. And uh, it is considered to be a separate method because uh, some like focus on specific statistics and basically just because of some history because uh, uh, researchers in experimental fields, they 
uh, prefer to stick with ANOVA and they do not like to learn more complicated things. Uh, and ANOVA is something like a more simple uh, uh, case of linear model, but basically just an example. And what is interesting is that if you uh, try to do, uh, instead of LM function, you will try to use uh, like, like this. Let's do it like this, right? But instead of uh, LM, we use our function. What we'll get, we'll get uh, exactly the same p values. So look, that's uh, 0 0.02999, it's actually 0 0.03, right? Uh, here we have f value and here we have f value and they're the same. And basically, if you even uh, uh, check help for the uh, function of, you will find interesting fact that uh, this function provides a wrapper to LM for fitting linear models to balance or ba on unbalanced experimental designs. So, I mean, what uh, this help says actually that uh, when you do uh, analysis of variance uh, in R, it's basically just uh, uh, do some linear, uh, general linear model and just call it uh, analysis of variance. So basically, the just the same methods. So what we did here with uh, LM function is actually the same to what we did with our function. Just it's another perspective. So uh, and of course, uh, uh, using like LM function, you have more freedom. For example, uh, for a linear model, you can uh, uh, for multiple linear regression or a general linear model. In general, you can combine, for example, both categorical variables and some continuous variables. So here uh, you can also add some for some uh, other predictor like, uh, let's say, Uh, let's say something like um, number of words, number of words. We had something like total words. Let's check. Word count text. Word count text. Actually, you can even run it on uh, in AOF, so uh, it will get some count text. Ah. A word with this small w. Uh, you can even run it with our function, you'll get some, no, but why? Ah, because I didn't select it, right. Um, actually, you can even uh, run it with our function, uh, but if you run it, uh, I mean, uh, it will not be uh, analysis of variance anymore. If you use a continuous predictor, for uh, for analysis of variables, uh, it could be something like ANCOVA, and there are some extensions of, of ANOVA that uh, incorporate uh, uh, numerical predictors. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's uh, in, uh, ANOVA is just an, a, a specific, specific example of. Uh, uh, general linear model when all your predictors are categorical variables that are like internally converted to uh, uh, internally converted to dummy variables and that's all. Okay, so now please uh, uh, try to uh, do uh, linear regression with a parameter normalized gender uh, on some different outcome. And you can choose the outcome that you want. 
you can choose word count text or you can explore and choose something more interesting uh wikipedia link count i think not interesting because it's really not normally far from normal what can be interesting is you can uh derive something like uh, gender inequality from uh, uh, uh for a play for example see, for example you can um uh, uh calculate percent of uh, female speakers or Mm -hmm. I don't know what can I do else. Uh, maybe you have also a number of words uh, spoken by males and females, or so and divide one to another. And but I'm not sure that you have something like that. Uh, and also you can use some of this some of this uh, uh, network uh, metrics. For example, average degree means number of average connections for a character means number of mean number of uh, characters uh, that directly uh, uh, that directly uh, interplay that directly. Uh, that actually uh, just uh, on the one scene together. So that will be enough for having a connection. So you can take some numerical variable as a uh, outcome and use it as a for predictor, uh, uh, normalized gender. So please try to do it by yourself and good luck with it or maybe you have any questions and i can answer mm, so we just need to mm, uh, change uh, the size variable which we had in our code to some in the other variable well you can so consider this task uh, like I, I mean i don't like to give a task in terms of you need to change something to get something um, because uh, actually you can do something more uh, creative if you want, because for example, you can create new variables from what you have. For example, uh, yeah, what, what I, I, did, I gave you some examples that you can uh, get some metric of gender imbalance based on proportion of female or male characters uh, in a play. Uh, so just, yeah, you can just, change one value to another but uh try to think not this way but in terms of uh the task that you explored so you want to check whether um as this genders influence uh some uh metric of the play Try, try to find something that is interesting for you. And maybe if you have any questions, you can ask me what, what it is. So we need to preserve our strategy as tragic comedy uh, variables, but uh, now we should uh, search uh, something else than uh, size. Yeah, That's right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Try to do it by yourself. And if you have any questions, if you have any problems, just write or tell me what's wrong. And if you get some results, try to interpret them and send me a plus.
So, how are you guys? Uh, what, what's happening? Do you have any results or you have errors? Just I want to, to see what, what, what's happening. Um,
So how are you guys? Uh, I, I don't see any pluses. I don't see any like, uh, I don't know what's happening. I have an error. I mean, I expected one of these two outcomes. Uh, Anna, uh, what what's your result? What's your do you have any success of uh, uh, in implementing linear regression? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have results yet. Um, yeah, but what's the stage of uh, uh, what's the stage of your uh, uh, task? I mean, what's the problem? Do you have any like you know errors, or you don't know where where to start, or? I have some questions, but I don't know. Maybe I have too many questions and I should do it. Okay. Uh, That's okay. That's actually why uh -huh. we have a seminar. So do we have uh, we, we have seminars? So yeah, please ask them. Uh, so maybe I don't know. Maybe I could, um, I could share, uh, I could yeah. share my screen. Okay. 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 So just one minute. Okay, so okay, so uh, you said uh, that uh, in order to uh, to know something about a number of uh, female speakers, uh, you should uh, correlate it with uh, the size, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you said uh, something about new data frame. So uh, um, uh, um, I should put uh, something like, uh, I don't know. Uh, and then uh, I should write it. Wait, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, yeah uh, so I should create something like this and then mm -hmm. uh, write, uh, write a code that would uh, get to the uh, size column and uh, no i don't mean that you need to create like specific data frame and a specific uh, in a separate like pipeline no uh i mean that uh, first of all um yes i thought that you need to combine these two variables number a number of speakers for males and size but how exactly do you want to combine them like what what you can do you, you want to sum them or you subtract them or what Mm, you mean with the variable number of speakers? Number of speakers, variable... male and size, or whatever. No, yeah, I think uh, that's right. That maybe uh, uh, the larger the play, the more there are like uh, speakers in general and uh, mm -hmm. female speakers also. So yes, maybe uh, it is like linear correlation. Like it, I mean, it's my hypothesis. If you want to combine these two variables together to create a new variable, what can you do? Mm, maybe something with our regression models. I don't know. Uh, no, uh, uh, do not think now in terms of regression models. Uh, think about variables. So we have a variable of number of speakers female, but it is not normalized respected to the size of a play. So we have 20 females in one play and 10 females in another play. Uh, but we cannot say that uh, in general, like uh, in the first play, we have more, it's more female oriented, I know, uh, drama because it has more characters. Maybe it's something like uh, uh, a very big, like in, in Germany, we have many like Napoleon, uh, or something like that that has like 100 characters and in this case 20 characters it's just a small percentage in another play where you have only two characters and both of them are females that's pretty like um uh unequal to the side of 
females. So you have more females than males in this case. So think about uh, what a variable you can create to like uh, normalize number of uh, female characters to number of uh, characters in the play. Mm, so I need to find some uh, variable uh, with uh, the characters like, or, or maybe I, I have found a variable with um, average length. There was something. Mm, no, average length is something like uh, average length from one in a graph. Uh, average uh, shortest path from every point to every other point. Uh, so actually you have size. Size actually is a uh, number of all characters that you have, both male and female. And very rarely you have also something like unknown, but it's actually pretty rare condition, so you can ignore it. Uh, or you can, you can just not ignore, you can talk later more precisely if you want. Uh, Maybe I have a question. So, uh, uh, are, are there any fu function to look uh, which variable uh, means what? So, uh, uh, or it is not written anywhere? No, no. In, in this case, you have only uh, only well, well, the uh, name of the variable. So, yeah, like, yeah. And actually, for okay. now, we don't have a, a like a code book. And yes, I agree. We, we should have one because we have many variables and not it is not clear even for me sometimes <laughs> what we have in there uh, okay so it, it means not like the size in the like thousands of uh, words but it's just a yeah, number of characters yeah yeah size is just number of characters because actually you can see many similar uh, variables and they are all the same like number of characters size or I, I don't remember other variables, but they're all the same. So size, number of characters, so something just number of characters. I mean, um, I just didn't want to say you exactly, but uh, I mean exact solution, but it's in this case, it's task for pre-processing for some uh, data analysis before just application statistical. Mm. Uh, but by pre-processing, by Preprocessing, you mean something like that, or you mean something totally different? Uh, but preprocessing, I use, uh, I mean something like uh, uh, creating a new variable inside pi pipeline using mutate, for example. Mm, ah, okay, so I need to write something here about, oh, I'm sorry, uh, something here uh, about like size, I don't know equals to something or I am completely lost. Yeah, for point. example, yes, yes. But uh, okay. first you need to think whether you have all your variables. Yeah, yeah. So think how can, I don't know, you can get a variable uh, that says, for example, percentage of female or ratio of females in the play. You don't have this variable in your data frame, but you can easily create it from what you have. So it is, and no, it, it can do that, yes, uh, because it doesn't know. Uh, um, yes, I think it, uh, it doesn't know. Uh, actually, so it for example, it, it, number of males, or and sometimes are knows, but we can ignore for them. Uh, so, and to get ratio, a ratio, you usually want to something divide. divide yes. Something. Sorry. Yes, uh, uh, I, I, should, I should divide or no? no. Yeah, but uh, otherwise. So, uh, okay. number of speakers will be always uh, lower or the same as the size. So it cannot be bigger okay. than the size, right? And uh, okay. you can even explore this variable. You will get some values there from zero to one. Actually, it's not good for linear regression where uh, you have a bounded variable, but Sometimes actually it's pretty much okay, especially in cases where you don't have like many zeros and ones. Uh, so now you need to but assign just... this calculation to a new variable. Like, I don't know, uh, so just... female yeah. uh, ratio. 
Ah, okay. So it would be uh, speakers, female relations, something like that. Yeah, no. but two points. Uh, first of all, not uh, the sign, but uh, equal sign. And uh, you want to do it vice versa. So in the right part, you calculate something and you assign it to something to the left. It's a usual way okay. of programming. You calculate something on the right, assign it to the uh, variable on the left. All right, I think mm. it's... And there should be some like... Yeah, uh, comma. Comma and... Yeah, I, yeah. I think... And now let's uh, write from the scratch a formula. So just delete what you have now and... Uh, I mean, uh, inside the land. Like form, everything. Inside the land for LM. Ah, form. LM, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just delete it and try to write it from the scratch. So, okay. what is the outcome that you want to uh, predict? Um, so, I, I want to predict uh, how, um, how, how the size of the play influences the number of uh, female speakers in the play. Mm, so. No, uh, 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 for the task we needed to use as a predictor normalized gender. So normalized gender is a predictor. So uh, yeah, it's, okay. yeah, you can uh, manually divide it by to is tragedy by and is tragic comedy. But it's a, 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 I showed it to you just uh, for better understanding what's going on inside uh lm function so you don't need to manually create this uh is tragedy and is tragic coming here uh you can use normalized gender as a predictor and it will create uh dummy uh variables automatically inside lm function and so you don't need to, to create uh, by yourself a strategy tragic comedy so you can use a predict as a predictor mm -hmm. normalized gender uh, and uh, I'm sorry, but uh, normalized genre is some, uh, so we are using it all the time uh, and we are using it um, for seminars, uh, this and uh, previous, but uh, this is a function from, uh, from our Draco, yes? Uh, no, normalized genre is a column. Uh, is a column in this uh, uh, ah. that frame, you can find it out. Uh, ah. You can use uh, NA comedy, NA, NA comedy tragedy, okay. and sometimes yes. tragic comedy. You don't have, okay. yes. you don't have tragic comedies for Russian corpus. So for Russian corpus, it was a bit uh, more simple. Simpler, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay, so what is the predictor? What is outcome? Okay, so as a predictor, I use uh, normalized uh, genre, yes? Right. So I want to know uh, how many female speakers are in different genres, yes? Yes, or uh, not number of female speakers, but it's uh, the ratio. So you want to test whether uh, genre over, uh, over play influence uh, gender ratio. Maybe you have an, a, a hypothesis that, um, I don't know, some um, tragedy where very, uh, or comedy where very, I don't know, you can create actually many hypotheses there. So something like uh, tragedy where more uh, centered on the male uh, feelings, uh, especially in romanticism, uh, era and comedies were less uh, focused on some male figure mm -hmm. and uh, that's why they will be less gender biased. Mm -hmm. And tragic comedy, for example, is uh, more like a tragedy in this case than comedy. I would hypothesize something like that. It doesn't matter what exactly you hypothesize. It is not a, um, a seminar on philology, uh, literature studies or whatever. So you can just come with a hypothesis from your common sense. It will be okay. Uh, yes, uh, seems, to okay. Uh, seems to be okay, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, and I, uh, if I want, uh, I also can, as um, uh, with uh, word context, so I can uh, add one more. Uh, 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 yeah, and so I can, I can write something like, uh, 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 no, I have, I have it already. Yes. Yes, it would make sense. But if I want, uh, if I want, I, I can uh, write some other variable here and then edit. Yes, as a yes, and you can uh, use it, for example, uh, as a uh, outcome instead of what you have, or you, for example, you can use it as a predictor, as like additional predictor to predictors that you have. You're not limited on the number of predictors that you can have, but in general, the idea is that you want to keep it as simple as possible. Let me discuss why actually because of overshooting problems and like uh, a comma razor, a comma's razor. Uh, so, and, uh, yeah, could we add, for example, like print year finish? And then uh, I would say that my hypothesis is that uh, this speaker's female ratio would uh, depend on the year also. Yes, but I would. Think that actually this uh, influence can be nonlinear, and I would explore first it with some figures whether there is some linear regression, uh, linear relationship uh, in general, and because maybe it's something like U shaped, and also U shaped, for example, there was a peak of uh, I don't know more female oriented uh, drama plays, and then it was again. Uh, more biased to, to males. Uh, so you need to check it first because actually you'd better to check it for every variables uh, that you use because linear regression. Uh, and how, how should I check it? Uh, check you can it? draw a figure using plot and so on. And I actually recommend you to try it just to play with it. I mean, try different variables, try to use different outcomes, uh, try even something that can, uh, that may be meaningless. And uh, I mean, try to explore it, try to play with, uh, with it and with different uh, predictors, outcomes, and uh, try to interpret the results that you have. It's actually the best way to learn it because, and you, you can do it because you have functions, you have uh, um, uh, pre-processing skills uh, that you can apply to even extract, even create new variables that you want. Um, so, yeah. For example, uh, on the screencast uh, yesterday, we explored uh, whether uh, job title length influence uh, salaries. Uh, because, I mean, you know, there are some very long uh, job titles and it was interesting whether it's somehow uh, correlated. Uh, so you can just extract, num for example, you can do more or less the same for uh, this data frame. For example, you extract uh, length of title. So you can, you, uh, having this data, you can just create a, actually new variables. You're not limited to something that you have here. Uh, you can come with hypothesis. You can think about variables that you have. Um, yeah. And if you have any questions on what's inside the uh, data frame, I can always ask, uh, answer this question. Uh, yeah. so, now, uh, so now, yeah. I, I, so now uh, I ran uh, my code and mm -hmm. I got something like this. So is it, does it make sense? Yes, no. yes. So uh, why, why do we have our p-values, p-values? Uh, ah, it, it is value very... The bottom is a p-value for the whole model. So whether the whole model is better than null model. Null model here uh, is a model with only intercept. So like uh, it can be interpreted like uh, no general influence, general does not influence uh, at all. 
to the speaker female ratio. Uh, and like you tested, compared you to, to, to your data, whether it's probable to get this result. And you have very, very small prevailing, meaning that no, it's very improbable if the null hypothesis is true to get such results. Um, and also you have like p-values for specific parameters. Uh, but remember mm. that some so, are uh, bigger than others. Hmm? So, uh, so, uh, so it doesn't make the sense uh, this. Yes. Digit, so yes. if, if our p-value. Yes. Mm, uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe, I'm sorry, uh, does or does not? <laughs> because I am confused. Does it make I mean, sense or it does not make sense? Uh, what do you mean by make sense? I mean, that's a legitimate linear model and uh, um, yes. But if we wanted to, to, to answer some question like uh, does, uh, uh, does the speaker's female ratio correlate with uh, the normalized uh, genre? And so the answer is uh, no, there is no correlation. The answer oh, is uh, yes. Uh, ah, the answer is yes. We, we can reject null hypothesis because of very small p-value. And null yes, hypothesis okay. said that there is no connection. So yeah, you need to learn this logic because it's the main okay. action I think, in the course, like that you have some null model, mm -hmm. null hypothesis, and you either reject, reject it or not. If you reject null hypothesis, it's usually something that you have some effect. So I need to go, sorry. So uh, yeah, but I think, yep. yeah, but I think that, so did I complete this task that you get? Yes, now? yes, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so we even did some correlation. Okay, yeah, so thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think also in terms of whether um, like, uh, um, tragedies and tragicomedies, uh, uh, so which uh, genres uh, have more uh, speakers female ratio, which less, and you can even test it actually by yourself uh, using, for example, group by summarize function and so on. So try to answer this question. So you now know that, yeah, there are some differences, but try to understand in which direct in which direction you have this difference mm -hmm. just, for sure. in a free time if you if you want i mean mm, so, so um to understand uh by, by direction what do you mean by direction uh, so, i mean that uh whether uh for example tragedies has more females than comedies or it's vice versa uh, because now we know that okay. there's a difference but try to uh, explore in which direction? I mean, like, uh, where you so have more, in, where you have less. In, in which, in which, uh, in which, uh, for, in which genre there is like in tragedy or in comedy or in tragic comedy, which is like uh, with the most female speakers. Uh, yes, yes, with exactly. the, okay. Yeah. Uh, and with the what function you said? Uh, or you can test it just by, for the, for example, calculating. Uh, group means using group by and summarize, for okay. example. But you can even derive it from coefficients. Try to think in terms of coefficients and then test your uh, interpretation of the coefficients with the results from uh, group by summarize. Okay, so that's all. See okay, you. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. You're welcome.